July 11, 2012, and I want to show what the main insect problems that we have down here in Florida are for the cucurbits. Now this is my hard-shelled gourd, and usually these are the ones that rarely have any problems with. I think this year is going to be really bad for insects because this is very unusual. You can see all these gross mating bugs here. These are uh, squash bugs and also the leaf-footed bugs, and it's very rare for them uh, to go on a gourd because they don't usually like the fuzzy soft gourds. And these are the eggs, and I don't see any nymphs yet, but the nymphs, if they're the red ones, then they're leaf-footed bugs, and this gourd is starting to get it. I can't spray here, unfortunately, because of the nest box. I'm going to go into the main patch. Passion, passion vine's doing good. I lost one of my three uh, uh, casa bananas, so now I only have two, but the two that are remaining are doing well. And check out the desert garden real quick, and then I'll go into the pumpkin patch, and there's a few things I want to talk about in there. Okay, so desert garden is doing all right. It's getting overgrown with weeds, and I really can't get in there because I've got the... Uh, these guys are the zinnias. I don't want them to, uh, I don't want to pull up the wrong things. And then those uh, funny shaped leaves are the uh, watermelons. And then we've got the, the gourds here. These are uh, uh, swan gourds. And yeah, already you can see these, uh, these eggs here. They're pretty and they're gold and everything, but they're bad. These are the, the squash bugs and it's already getting squash bugs. At least I'll be able to spray this plant because it's not next to anything of value. Uh, it's been raining a lot, so once again my uh, sunflowers are flattened and squished. I'm surprised at the ones that are reminding me. So I think I'm going to have sunflower vines growing in this garden as opposed to uh, tall plants. There's the uh, the moon and stars watermelon doing real nice. And I guess, yeah, I still have my flags out from 4th of July. They can stay up for a while because there's fortunately no holidays from here until October. And I don't see the cucurbit that used to be here. Oh, there's some cucurbits right there. Hopefully they're pumpkins. But, all right. Okay, so it's later in the day now, and the chickens are a little more quiet. I just wanted to show that this is what I have been up to here in the pumpkin patch. I have four strips of turp. They're three feet wide laid down, so that's 12 feet. And I'm in the shade under a tree right now because it is extremely hot. It's about 86 in the shade, which means it's probably 90 out in the sun. And that's actually cooler than it's been because of the rain. And you can see there's still a little bit of rain left on the tarp, but it'll eventually evaporate. Now this stuff uh, does have little pores in it naturally, um, but I'm planning to uh, poke extra holes to help with drainage anyways. And I'm going to be cutting holes into it, and probably this evening I'm going to be planting uh, seeds into this. And I can finally have said I officially started on my pumpkin patch. Now, this is about half of the patch. <laughs> Someone laid an egg. Half of the patch is done. And I'm thinking I'm going to need maybe uh, eight or nine more of these to cover everything. I'm going to set the camera down. Just talk a little while. Hopefully you guys will be able to, to hear. A little nicer to look at. There we go. Okay, so um, the insects, as you saw earlier, I don't even have pumpkins out yet, but I can tell that this year 
it's gonna be a really nasty year as far as insects go for me the squash bugs and leaf-footed bugs are out now last year I, I did a little bit of research I looked into one of my books and I found out that the main insect problem as far as those types of bugs here in Florida are the uh, leaf-footed bugs and leaf-footed bugs are a member of the squash bug family they look like the squash bugs but they're bigger I'll show a, a photo of one or put a link where you guys can see what these are like and guess what they're pretty much just found in Florida and uh, I think Texas so yay I have to deal with a specialized insect that's larger than a regular squash bug and they lay clusters of eggs just like the squash bug and they have red nymphs and I remember them on my tomatoes when I tried to grow them last year and what they do is that they suck out the juices of the plants with their proboscis so you get pumpkins that start wilting and look like they don't have enough water and you water them and they don't the leaves will not reinflate because these insects just keep sucking out all the liquids and juices that are inside your plant and they're terrible and then the plants die and then we have the melon worm which is a moth these moths come out at night and land on the plants and lay their eggs and then you get these light green caterpillars that will eat the leaves and skeletonize your plant. Those of you that, that saw my videos last year, that was a big problem. So you can you know that they're there because you find the plants are all eaten up and you find little caterpillar poops. And then they wrap silk and make cocoons on the leaves that they don't eat and turn into little moths. The moth is a small, uh, almost an inch. It's it's a brown li lined edges of the wings and the center of the wings are white it's actually kind of pretty um and the tails have these little like hairy things on the, that, that make it look interesting uh in the morning if you disturb the the plants leaves when you walk through them you'll see all these little moths light colored moths fly out so i'm gonna have to buy some insect sprays and I'm gonna use probably some of the ones that you guys have suggested in videos from previous years because the moment that the plants come out I mean as soon as those two cotyledons are above the ground I'm going to have to spray them because the bugs I know are just gonna be on them instantly the fact that, that gourds rarely have insect problems and this year my gourds are getting infested, which has never ever happened before, means that I have to battle the bugs before they even come. So it's gonna suck. But with this uh, tarp laid down, I'm hoping that that'll definitely help control with the weeds. I think one of the problems that I made last year as I was looking at my old photos on Flickr was, yeah, I tilled all this ground, I did all this hard work, and when the pumpkins were growing, the grass and the weeds were growing with them and by the time they were big you couldn't come in here and do it manually or you know forget it with machines you can do it with a weed whacker or a lawnmower or anything like that and it was too big to, to spray with the roundup so i think the way to go is to use this black stuff hopefully it'll work out i've seen that some of the pumpkin growers up in the north there is one farm i guess in north florida which has had success using this method, uh, although they, they mound up rows of hills. Uh, but for now I'm doing it flat, just an experiment to see how it goes. Okay, talk about something else, I want to switch gears, is uh, so I think those of us here on YouTube, there aren't that many of us, but the regular ones that we're always here every year trying, we have a lot of common ground. Mainly that, of course, we love pumpkins, we love growing the pumpkins because we, we like the whole gardening aspect, the, the biological aspect of watching the plant grow, the genders, the colors, and seeing them. And then we're also major Halloween fans. I've really noticed that. We, we do this because we love Halloween. It's one of our favorite holidays. For me, I, I, I'm still not sure if it's my first or my second favorite. Easter's really close in there for me. I've, as you guys know, 
I love birds, so, and I like plants. So springtime and you get all the pretty colored eggs and baby birds coming out and, you know, baby chicks. I'm not into the rabbits, though. They're okay. They just kind of, you know, come with the season. So it's hard for me to decide if I like Easter or Halloween better. They both have really neat stuff about them. Um, okay. So I've been thinking about all of us here and how we're this unique, nice little YouTube community. Uh, there were some really wonderful videos a few years ago, like in 2008 and 2009. Great growers, beautiful footage, but they only grew for the one year and they haven't grown since. And that's, that's too bad. So I enjoy watching everybody else's videos. Just a, a few quick shout outs of who I'm thinking of. Our random Joe video, you and I have been chatting lately. And uh, Pumpkin Grower, uh, wait a minute, I get your guys' names mixed up. I'm sorry because you have similar names. I think it's Pumpkin Grower 14 and Pumpkin Patch 1993. I might have gotten your names in the patch and grower and all that <laughs> mixed up. Um, Braniden and that's it for now. Uh, you guys are the ones that that are have been growing your pumpkins year after year. Uh, but I don't know if some of you would... I've been thinking about this idea that it would be nice to have somewhere besides YouTube where we can discuss pumpkins and chat about pumpkins and gourds and loofahs. And I was thinking about making a message board. I, I've run message boards several times, but it's kind of a pain to... Uh, so I don't, I don't even know where I would make one. I, I don't really like pro boards. Uh, there's another one. I think V-Bulletin is nice, but you have to pay for that, and it's really expensive. I don't want to pay for anything, but it would be nice to have something without ads. And then there used to be what used to be Easy Board. It's called something else now. It changed. That one's nice, but it, it also... I don't know. It's just not used as much, but all that would matter is if we would use it. I do have a community that's kind of like a message board on LiveJournal. It's called the uh, Cucurbitaceae, which is the family name for plants and the members of the uh, pumpkin, squash, gourd family, things like that. Some of us are already there. Uh, uh, Alex, I think, and Mehmet, we, we hang out there and post our videos and share stuff there as well. Uh, so I'll, put, I'll post a link to that. You guys can look at it. You can join Live Journal if you want, but uh, if that's all you're going to use it for, you don't have to make journal posts or blog posts if you don't want to. It would just be something to, uh, to chat about pumpkin growing and post photos and go into more detail than we can do here on uh, here on YouTube. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. It would be fun, I think. No obligations, of course. And, uh... I think that's it for this update. I might do a little addition to this and show if uh, if I actually make the holes and plant stuff. Oh, I, this is wonderful. It just cooled off and the sun went away. Thank goodness. I'll look up there. Thunder clouds. Oh gosh, I hope it rains. Well, it will rain. It rains every day in Florida. And I'm sorry about you guys up north that are in the drought. I, I'd love to send you some of this uh, tropical rain. Here's you know, the palm trees and my banana tree that's actually a weed and in my way. I may get rid of those. Um, the, the disadvantage of us getting the rain every day, it is disgustingly hot and humid right now. Uh, the rain doesn't give you any comforts, like, not up north when you get showers and... That's so why I've heard that after it rains, everything's cooled down. Here, you get rain, and then when it's done, it gets hot and sticky. And if the sun comes out after a rainstorm, it's even worse. It's just gross and muggy and... Ugh. So, it's only cool while it's raining. And then you're getting wet, which... I mean, unless you want to be out in the rain having fun, which I've done a few times, it's, it's not really a good thing. But it's it's good for the plants. Plants love this. And, uh, 
Oh, real quick here, a little overgrown area. These are four o'clock plants. These open in the evening. That's why they're called four o'clocks, not necessarily exactly at four, but they open in the evening and they smell wonderful. And I let them grow because my favorite insects, the sphinx moths come. Sphinx moths look like little hummingbirds and they have proboscis, which are their tongues, that they stick into these long tubes. You can see they're closed right now. But they are like hummingbirds. They will stick their proboscis in there and sip out all the nectar. So uh, after watching random Joe video about his nighttime stuff, I realized it's been years since I've come out here at night with my flashlight and filmed the moths. And they are out now. They do come out in July. So uh, maybe I'll do some filming and hopefully they'll, if the flowers open tonight, there'll be some moths.